Good evening, students. I hope you're doing good. And I'm here to read you your nightly chapter of Crenshaw with Rossi's help. Hopefully, he just ate, so maybe he's not going to want to stay in my lap. But I'm reading chapter 10, and um, we're going to read Crenshaw to you. And we're going to work on asking questions while you read. And you can do that too. I'll go ahead and model it for you. And then next time you read, I want you to try asking those questions. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? Chapter 10. After I got ready for bread, I lay on my mattress and thought things over. I thought about the stuff I'd put in my keepsakes bag. Some photos, a spelling bee trophy, a bunch of nature books, my teddy bear, a clay statue of Crenshaw that I'd made when I was in second grade, my worn out copy of A Hole is to Dig. I thought about Crenshaw and the surfboard. I thought about the purple jelly beans. Mostly though, I thought about the signs I'd been noticing. So here I'm gonna ask a question. Hmm, what signs are those? What does he mean? What's Jackson mean here? I am very observant, which is a useful thing for a scientist to be. B, here is what I'd been observing. Big piles of bills, parents whispering, parents arguing, stuff getting sold, like the silver teapot my grandma gave my mom and our laptop computer, the power going off for two days because we hadn't paid the bill, not much food except peanut butter and mac and cheese and cup of noodles, my mom digging under the couch cushions for quarters, my dad digging under the couch quarters for couch cushions for dimes, my mom borrowing toilet paper from work, the landlord coming over and saying, I'm sorry, and shaking his head a lot. It didn't make sense. So now I want you to ask some questions. Ask you some, some questions about what I just read. Big pile of bills, parents whispering, Parents arguing, stuff getting sold, the power going off, not much food. Okay. Are you thinking maybe they don't have some money? They don't have a lot of money? That's what I'm thinking too. Okay, let's keep reading. My mom had three part-time jobs. My dad had two part-time jobs. You think that that would add up to one whole, two whole actual jobs, but it didn't seem to. My mom used to teach music at a middle school until they cut her job. Now she worked as a waitress at two restaurants and a cashier at a drugstore. She wanted to get another job teaching music, but so far nothing had come up. After my dad had to quit construction work, he started a handyman business. What's a handyman business? He did small fix-it stuff, but sometimes he wasn't feeling well and had to cancel appointments. He also gave private guitar lessons, and he was hoping to go to community college part-time to learn computer programming. I'd figure my parents had a plan for making everything okay, because parents always have a plan. But when I asked them what it was, they said stuff like, maybe we could plant a money tree in the backyard. <laughs> or maybe they could start their rock and roll band up again and win a Grammy award. I didn't want to leave our apartment. Why is Jackson thinking they're going to have to leave their apartment? But I could feel it coming. Even if nobody said anything. I knew how things worked. I'd been through this before. It was too bad because I really liked where we lived. Even though we'd only been here a couple of years. Swan Lake Village was the name of our neighborhood. It didn't have any real swans, but all the mailboxes had swans on them and the community pool had a swan painted on the bottom. The pool water was always warm. Mom said it was from the sun, but I suspected illegal peeing. Ick. <laughs> Ick. <laughs> all the streets in Swan Lake had two words, in the, two words in their names. Ours was Quiet Moon, but there were others like Sleepy Dove and Weeby Wood and Sunny Glen. 
My school, Swan Lake Elementary, was only two blocks from my house. It didn't have anything with swans on it. Hmm? Swan Lake Village wasn't a fancy place at all. Just a regular old neighborhood, but it was friendly. It was the kind of place where you could smell hot dogs and burgers grilling every weekend, where kids rode their scooters on the sidewalk and sold lousy lemonade for a quarter a cup. It was a place where you had friends you could count on, like Marisol. Who's Marisol? You wouldn't have thought it was a place where people were worried or hungry or sad. Our school librarian likes to say things. Our school librarian likes to say you can't judge a book by its cover. Maybe it's the same way for neighborhoods. Maybe you can't judge a place by its swans. Are you getting sleepy? Because you just had a snack? All right, well, that's the end of our chapter. Is it chapter 10? And when you read, the next time you read, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to ask questions as you read. And hopefully tomorrow, I'll read you chapter 11 um, of Crenshaw. Crenshaw and Jackson. All right, good night. Oh, are you saying good night too? Oh, you're watching the birds.